1992년 4월 29일 미국 로스앤젤레스에서는 한인타운을 대상으로 폭동이 일어났습니다. 당시 한국인 이민자들의 가게를 갈취하기 위해 강도로 변한 폭도들이 대거 침범했고 그들은 마치 쇼핑하듯이 물건들을 훔치고 닥치는 대로 부수며 불까지 질렀습니다. 그런데 얼마 후 전쟁터를 방불케 하는 거리에 총을 든 한국인들이 하나둘 나타났습니다. 특전사 출신 해병 전후의 군대를 갔다 온 예비군이라면 누구나 하나둘씩 집결해 가족과 일터를 지키기 위한 전투에 돌입합니다. 생명의 위협을 느낄 만큼 험악한 폭동 속에서도 총을 들고 지키는 한인들의 모습에 폭도들은 더 이상 접근할 수 없었다고 합니다. 이들이 들고 나온 무기는 실제 민수용으로 판매되던 AR-15과 AK 계열 화기 그리고 우지가 사용되었죠. 그 중에서도 수출형 민수용 K-1 기관단총을 사용하는 사진이 매우 유명세를 탔는데요. 사진 속에 한국인들이 들고 있는 K-1은 90년대 미국에 수출되던 K-1A였습니다. K-2 소총처럼 민수용 버전 K-1이 발매되어 총기 수입 업체들을 통해 미국 시장에 진출한 것이었죠. 민수용 K-1은 K-2와 함께 북미에서 희귀한 총을 모으는 컬렉터들에게 인기를 얻으며 현재는 레어 아이템으로서 상당히 높은 가격에 거래되고 있습니다. 미국의 실총 리뷰 그룹인 나이노 리뷰는 K-1 소총에 대해 리뷰하면서 깊은 존경을 표현해 큰 화제가 됐는데요. 특히 미국 최고의 총 전문가로 불리는 미국 사격협회 그랜메스터 클래스가 30년 전 루프탑 코리안과 비슷한 옷을 입고 K-1 소총을 잡자 엄청난 반응이 이어집니다. I only have one shotgun. That's all I have. We will continue to serve this community by doing the proper way of business. I'm a globe trotter. You and I, pick your nine. How'd you mind? Who'd you know? Dalla, we just different. I don't want to. Georgia, now, TV, now, Sasha, now, I see that no bala on. I'm a globe trotter. Korea town, eh? Oh, Shinge Sol. Han Yong Hamida. All right, 150. Impact. Impact. All right. 200. Impact. Impact. Nice. Okay. Okay. So 250. So for guys out there, uh, the tar the sighting system on this, there's two positions. The front flip is the large aperture for close range engagements, and the large ap the small ring aperture is for long range engagements, much like the Gordon or late M16A1s. And so I zeroed this at the 300 meter setting, so close to the 350 yards, and I'm having to hold very low, which is an issue for this one because I don't see the entire target on the lower half. So I'm going to have to figure out sort of mentally where to hold it. Right, because you're basically holding it in the berm in front of the target that you're now going to be shooting at. Correct. Okay, uh, that was low on the, it was an impact, but it was low. You can come up uh, probably six inches. Dead center. Nice. Nice. Okay. All right. 300. Uh, that just sailed over his head. Mm, quarter target high. Impact. Impact. All right. I had. I already had uh, to bump uh, uh, it off target to the right for those. Uh-uh-uh. Not yet. Not time to put the sight right on the target yet. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happened on that first shot, wasn't it? Yeah. I, I, I figured 300 and 350 were pretty close. So I basically just sat it, sat the sight onto the chest level and it, it went over. Yep. All right, 350. You know, the elevation looked good. It was just off the right. And just off the left. Uh, that one was a little bit on the low side. Impact. Upper chest, dead center. Impact. All right. I mean, in all fairness, you're doing okay so far. I mean, yeah. A couple so misses, far, let's but... not speak too soon. This is, I mean, in all fairness too, like you're saying, 350 meters or 300 meters, 350 yards. This is regular. This encompasses already most of your combat engagements yep. uh, that you would be looking at to, to begin with. I only see a speck of white knowing that it, that is the head position. And I'm going to try to place it uh, right where that head position is to see if uh, basically a head hold would land my shots at the chest or belly area at 400 uh, yards. Okay, let's do it. Impact low, low, right on the bottom edge. If you can give it a tiny more, give it a tiny more. <laughs> nice, dude. <laughs> 
Are you serious? Yes. Okay. 450. Impact. Perfect. Another. Impact. No. <laughs> Bro, no. No. <laughs> what? No. Uh-uh. 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 500. We're there. 500. Okay. That was a full target left at the head level. Okay. Uh, you're much closer. Okay, elevation's good. That was off the left by half a target. Off the right. That's an impact. Just over the right shoulder. Okay, all right, all right. That one was high by uh, two thirds of a target on the right edge. Just short. Mm. That's it. Got it. Tough, tough. Well, we found the line there, didn't we? Yeah, we did. So basically what I was doing for that last target, you see the, the uh, 650 uh, gong behind it? That 650 gong right behind it was where I was placing the elevation for it. Wow. And once I figured that out, I was using the edge of my front sight as a reference point because that one target is off to the left of the 500 yes. yard target and by using basically i was aiming at the 650 using that as a correlation to where i was dropping the rounds to the 500 by using josh as a uh, forward observer what i think was a shocking run for us because henry i know when you and i sat down on this neither of us thought that this thing was going to clear the course in the number of rounds like i think we both thought that this was either going to be a fail or high 30s in terms of round count if it passed and there you were like stacking them up out to 450. <laughs> no i i didn't expect it i mean you know i didn't expect it because i was i when you suggested for me to just shoot the k1 on the course i mean my face to <laughs> you was a whiskey tango foxtrot type of type of ex expression to josh so when we did shoot it, uh, especially with this type of sighting system, a sing basically a single point sighting system, uh, yeah, I was flabbergasted, to say the least. Um, but I think the existence of the K1A1 should be uh, should be discussed before we even get into the shocking performance of it, because I think um, the K1A1 has strangely and interestingly become that symbol of Korean or South Korean nationalism uh, overseas, particularly in the United States uh, for Korean immigrants. Uh, rightfully so. I think it's a it's a pretty nicely, it's a pretty decently designed uh, rifle. And uh, we will get into the categories of rifle and submachine gun, but um, it doesn't have any reliability issues. It can shrink to a really short package. The K1A1 was initially designed as a submachine gun. And you know, it was a 10.5 barrel to begin with as the Korean military adopted it. And so um, overseas, it, it had seen use in the Korean military, but specifically the K1A1 was an export model to the US. So they had to lengthen the barrel to 16 inches and put the flash hider all the way out here. Uh, but this was also during the 80s when it was being made, and uh, the Koreans back then were not shy <laughs> in making a few bucks on the civilian firearms market. And so they were competing with, let's say, the mainland Chinese, Norinko and, and some of those guys. But they had a product right here that used the American cartridge that was domestically produced. Uh, it was more expensive uh, back then to buy than, let's like, say, like a Type 56. But to the Korean shop owners, let's say in LA or you know all around America, they wanted some of them wanted to buy the indigenous South Korean rifle, and rightfully so, and it is a very well designed rifle. But on the fateful day, yeah. uh, on the LA riots. The K1A1 found its way to the rooftops in defense of some of those Korean businesses. And, um, and so forever, 
red polo shirt holding the K1A1. Uh, Meme-wise, it has just spread like wildfire. That's just become a symbol for a lot of Korean diaspora. You know, Henry, what I would add to that, the roof Korean sort of, you know, uh, concept, that I I would argue spreads beyond, at least in the U.S. today, it spreads beyond the, the just Korean culture. That, I think, has become a symbol of a of a self-reliant individual, regardless of you know, race, color, creed, who is doing what should be done in terms mm-hmm. of defending life and property with their firearm. And so, you know, that, that sort of, sort of a life ethos of a, of a way of a way of thinking and, and what should be done, I think that sort of permeates mm-hmm. beyond uh, just Korean culture into mainstay American culture at this point. How can we put this? It's a it's a stubborn Americanism mm. of self reliance is what this is. Very impressed with the roof Korean special, the K one A one. Yeah, pleasantly surprised. I I figured, like it's always it's always exciting to watch a rifle do well, and you could see our excitement when it just like cleared four hundred and four fifty, and we were like, holy crap! And then we did find the wall. You know, we did find the wall on where it fell off, but. Again, like within context, this was a a lot of fun to shoot. It was a lot of fun to delve into the back end history, the connotations that the K1A1 endures in your mind. And it was at the end of the day, it was an absolute pleasure to document something that is not very commonly seen. 여러분의 소중한 의견을 남겨주세요. 바쁘시더라도 구독과 좋아요 부탁드립니다. 지금까지 단골이시였습니다. 시청해주셔서 감사합니다.